In the second tutorial of set 5, uh, we'll quickly go through construction detailing. So I'll show you how to generate a construction detail drawing, um, how you can compose that on a sheet, and how you can start to um, embellish this detail drawing with extra line work. Uh, we'll also revisit annotation and dimensioning, uh, this time for detail drawings. Now what I have on the screen is a section drawing uh, because uh, the first detailed drawing we'll generate is a wall section. Now it is important that you generate your detailed drawing from a large scale drawing that will be included in the drawing set. Um, this links back to cross-referencing which we'll explain a little bit later further down the track. Um, so this section I have I uh, will put on a sheet um, and it is composed on a sheet. Um, so make sure that that's uh, done. Now the next step is to decide uh, which wall section you would like to put in your drawing set. So I've chosen this particular wall section. Now the process of creating a uh, view of that, a detailed view of that, is called uh, call out. And you can find that tool in the view tab in the create panel and the call out button there. So let's click on that. And to uh, specify a call out, you just need to draw a box around the uh, part of the drawing that you want to generate a detailed drawing from. So I'm going to highlight, and I'm left clicking and then I'm dragging my mouse to the other um, corner, and then clicking again. Now what you'll see is a dotted line, or what we call a bubble, um, around the area that you've actually um, highlighted. Now this is what I will uh, detail so if you want to uh, manipulate that just to show that then you can um, drag the blue circles on that uh, to change your view. Now this um, bubble that you see attached to that is uh, an annotation um, element and you can drag that up to wherever you want to actually place that. So if it's disrupting the view and I generally put it over in the corner somewhere um, and you can just keep dragging those blue circles until you get something that suits like that. Um, now that's a cross-referencing cross annotation symbol so it's part of all the annotations um, so it, it, it deals with cross-referencing. If you look over to my section view sorry my cro uh, section symbol you can see that it's been filled out with numbers um, and that number actually corresponds with my drawing number this one might be a little bit too long so you might want to consider uh, abbreviating your drawing numbers a little bit so it actually fits within the cross-referencing bubbles now this one refers to the first drawing um, on this particular sheet which is A2425 Zero 03. If I were to hop over to my third sheet, here it is, and look at the first drawing, so that's the first drawing, you'll see the section that it refers to. And that's how cross referencing works within a drawing set. While I'm here, I might just rename this, um, and you can right click and rename it to something a little bit shorter. So I'm just going to get rid of that A so that it all fits on my... Alternatively you can get rid of the 2425 and just have sheet numbers. Um, I'm just putting a project number there because I might have multiple projects. Now yeah, let's go back into our section view. Here we go. And you can see that that's changed dynamically. So that's my section symbol. Um, and every time you place a drawing on a sheet uh, Revit will fill out the cross-referencing um, numbers for you. Now you can see in my detail bubble here that it's got dashes. That's because my detail drawing hasn't been placed on a sheet yet. It's been generated but it hasn't been placed on a sheet. And as soon as we do that then Revit will fill out those numbers for you. So we'll come back to that um, a little bit later. So here's our um, call out um, drawing. Now if you uh, scroll down to all the sections, you'll see another view 
called call out of bar cross section and we can rename that if we like so if you go to that drawing you'll see that there it is um, a boundary has been placed around a view of that section um, and uh, that's a different drawing um, it's not a different drawing actually it's a, it's a view of the original model okay so if you change that wall that wall will change correspondingly but it's just a different view and like every views you can turn things on and off um, distinctively in each view I'm just going to rename this so it makes more sense to me um, wall section um, and I might call this typical okay just quickly correct that sorry okay so here is uh, my call out uh, my wall section named accordingly now the first thing we need to do is make sure that this is at the scale that we um, are required to have this at and that's one to one to ten so I'm just going to move this down here to one to ten and you see that things have changed slightly and the annotation have um, reduced in size. Now at this point we can start to embellish this with extra line work. Now if this was a detailed drawing it would be way too diagrammatic. You can see that there's no detail involved in this at all. Um, the junctions is just too simple um, and there's no text, no dimensioning, no further um, information that uh, tells me what this typical wall section uh, is constructed. So the first thing we'd need to do is put extra line work in. We'd also need to tidy up some of the um, symbols that are already there uh, to prepare us for extra annotation and dimensioning. So let's do that first. I'm just going to move these out a little bit okay um, and we can move them in a little bit later um, and you may not want to display this wall and that wall uh, that um, slab it's up to you um, I'll leave it in for the moment but what I will do is bring that boundary in so I can actually select the boundary and drag it in now that is the boundary of the uh, call out bubble um, in the original section so what you're changing here you're changing there as well if you can't see the boundary just go down here and click on the um, crop show crop region which is what that's called a crop region okay now to embellish this um, drawing with extra line work you need to go to the annotate tab and in the detail panel you'll see all the tools that enable you to do that you can see that you can just add lines and this is view specific so you'll only see it in the um, in this particular view you won't see it in the section um, same with all the regions and components so all the detail um, tools are here of course you can add further text and uh, dimensioning as well now let's say for an example this particular junction um, I'd like to put lines across here to uh, represent the joist um, and maybe further lines to represent the top and bottom plane. I can use the detail line, um, note the options bar and different types of drawing lines. So I can use thick lines, I can use dash lines, dotted lines, there's a whole heap of lines here um, and of course different methods. So I'm just going to use one line first and I'm just going to draw a line across there so it's uh, exactly like drawing okay this time uh, make sure that you've got the line thicknesses correct so if this is a line that represents a joist in section it'll have to be thick so you can play around with the thicknesses here so I've got 0.5 there um, and I've got 0 0.35 0 0.35 would probably be the most appropriate in this case and you can just continue with that approach so this time I'm going to offset this line by 50 I'm going to pick that line and I've got another line there um, oops and I should choose 0.35 for this okay and I'll change that to 0.35 as well 
So make sure you choose your line style before you start drawing so that you don't have to go back and change it all the time. Uh, 0.35 and I'm just going to put a cross across there. Okay, so there's my um, top plate and you can do the same to the rest of the wall so you can actually draw over lines as well okay to make them thicker or just to embellish it like so this is my top plate and you can just continue um, in the same manner to put some extra line work in now if I go back into my cross section you see that that's not there okay um, because these tools are view specific which um, is the good thing about it it will only um, display in the detail drawing now let's move down into the floor and wall junction um, because I want to show you how you can actually hide things or mask things so let's say for an example I want to continue this brick skin all the way down to um, let's say for the front street level for argument's sake um, and leave the timber stud on top of the uh, floor there. I may need to mask this entire section so that it doesn't appear um, because if I just draw lines over I'll still see the hatching behind it. Um, now masking is a region um, and you can create field region which is like a um, an area with a particular pattern inside it um, like what you see on the screen or a masking region which will hide um, whatever's in that region. So let's choose the masking region and I'm going to, a bit like drawing, I'm going to draw a box around the area that I don't want to see. Let's say that one and then finish. And as you can see it's masked it with um, just blank. Okay, if you select that um, you can also arrange it so that it's in the front of something or at the back of something so completely up to you. Now that that's masked out I can continue with my detailed drawing. Now I want to start drawing a wall um, down on this rebate here um, but I want to draw a detailed wall so I want to see the mortar, um, I want to see the lines in between that and I want to see the hatching in between um, for each brick as well. So I'm going to use a different tool, I'm not going to use a detail line that will take me forever um, I'm going to use uh, a repeating component um, and you can find that in here in the detail panel under component if you click on the arrow next to it you'll see something called a detail repeating detail component Now, before I do that though I'm going to hide the hatching on this wall because I don't really want to see it um, it really doesn't matter if you have it on or not a repeating component will overwrite that so it will cover it um, but it's a little bit distracting um, and I also want to show you how you can override um, visibilities for certain elements as well so I bring up the visibility graphics now what I want to do is hide the uh, cut pattern for walls so remember that there are two types of patterning there is a surface pattern which you see in elevation and then there's cut patterns which you see in section cut patterns is what I uh, don't want to see in this case and I only want to turn it off for walls so nothing else. Scroll down until you see walls here um, and just highlight it and over in the right hand side under cut patterns not cut lines I want to see that cut patterns um, click on the override button and uncheck the visible press OK apply OK and you'll see that the cut patterns have been uh, overridden um, and they're off. If you go to the cross section it's still there so it'll only affect this particular view. Okay so now we can actually put our uh, repeating component in using these boundaries as a guide. Um, so let's go into the repeating detail component. Um, by default there's a brick repeating detail that's been loaded. You can load in other family types if you like or create your own. Um, I'm just going to uh, I'll do a test over here so you can see what it looks like. It's just a click and another click. Oops, it's a little bit out of the view, um, so I'm not going to see. Click and another click, and you'll see what happens. So it creates uh, repetitive brick patterns with hatchings and mortar. So let's delete that and put it in place this time. Okay, so uh, repeating component. I'm going to. Um, 
just snap to there first and move it up to as far as you like. I'm just going to stop there so you can continue right up. But you can also change it after you've actually placed it. So I'm going to select it and grab that blue circle and pull it down to where I want. Okay. So as you can see it's also masked out any um, uh, lines that uh, go straight through there. Obviously the level line will still be visible um, but the um, the line of the brick wall underneath it is covered up. Okay so the next step would be to uh, make sure that we've got uh, the correct hierarchy of lines so um, around this rebate which is the profile of the concrete slab I want to make it bold. Um, so uh, you've got two choices you can either make the masking boundary line invisible so that you don't see the thin line and draw over your own line or you can um, manipulate that masking boundary so that it displays thick lines. I'm going to do that because it will save me a lot of time um, and I'm just going to select the masking boundary go up to edit boundary um, and make this one um, in the line style and you may not see it it's out of the screen but if you th uh, s um, click on the thin lines drop down list and scroll down until you see something um, a little thicker so that's my point three five um, and same with this one um, but with these two lines I want to make invisible so in the same drop down list you'll see an option called invisible lines and the same with this one okay so I've made those two invisible and those two thick okay, so now you can actually see the thick lines of that now if you get this sort of thing happening where the uh, detail component is actually lying on top of that thick line um, you might want to just draw another line there um, if I were to change the order of that and bring it to the front it will cover up the brick which is not what I want so I'm just going to bring it, send it to the back again um, and just draw another thick line over there up to you you've got a number of options there and of course if you want a thick line for the uh, brick as well so you might want to um, draw thick lines on the outside of that okay moving over to the internal ti uh, timber stud I can do um, the same thing here as I did with the um, the uh, top plate and just draw in another line there to indicate the bottom plate and you can do the same with if you have any timber flooring now I'm going to use another repeating component um, just to make things a little bit quicker um, but I want a flooring component this time and I know that um, it's not available in the drop down list that um, I had earlier so I will need to load it in as a family so let's go and see what's actually in the family libraries for detailed components and you can see there is a whole heap here okay so you can see that um, there are things like drainage um, metals okay so you can put in um, stair things uh, now what I want is a finish and a wood flooring finish so here's one that's been loaded in it's an Australian profile um, you can load in other profiles from the International Metric Library if you like but this is the one I want press OK it's been loaded in and now I can go back into the repeating component again and in the drop down list it's actually should be there now if it isn't there as a repeating component then it must be there as a uh, normal component detail component and there it is so I'm just going to bring it in as a one-off now you will need to leave room for the skirting board whether you model that or draw that it's completely up to you um, I'll probably come back and model it a little bit later but for the moment I'm just going to put in um, my flooring board but leaving a little bit of space for the skirting board 
I'm just going to put my phone board all the way up there and of course I can array or copy that um, like this okay so you can actually move it over so play around with that um, whether you leave a gap um, or put it right up next to each other uh, depends on how you want to see it in the drawing. I'm just going to leave it like that um, and copy that one. Uh, oops, let's select that again. Copy from there to there. Okay, so you can keep that going. I'll leave you to finish that off. Now, just keep in mind um, that uh, the reason why I leave some gaps here. Um, is so that um, the line work can be clearer when I print it out so I can actually see that that's a def uh, separate element. Uh, sometimes that's done in detailed drawings. Um, um, you leave gaps between things so you can see the two different line works. Okay, quickly moving on, you'll see that there are other things inside this detail panel that you can play around with. There are detail groups, um, so if we place a detail group, oops, we don't have any detail groups at the moment, so if you had um, groups of detail objects, let's go into there, and you can see a drawing of that, um, such as that structure there um, with the, uh, the bolts and the, the channel. Um, then you can load that in as a group. Now we don't have any um, but I'm going to go straight into installation which is um, a little bit like the repeating uh, component it allows you to put um, a pattern in there that represents um, installation. Right, so now what that is, is a very specific, if I can select it, is um, a, a particular installation that is 80 in width, okay, so you can change that to suit your cavity if you like. Okay, so it's um, now 50 in width, you can move it over, whatever suits, okay, so you can put insulation into your cavity as well. Now you will need to consider things like um, brick ties or flashing, um, things that you need to draw in yourself. But you will find in the family libraries that there is a range of those sort of um, detail components in here. So you can see that um, there are different brick joints, um, a line stud wall, there is a, a wall tie, a masonry tie as well. So you can use those to embellish your uh, line work. Okay, now I'm just going to quickly go back into dimensioning and annotation because this is where you need to um, continue all your dimensionings um, and annotation. Now um, with dimensioning you'd be dimensioning what is um, really important in a detailed drawing so you might want to dimension let's say the uh, rebate, okay like so um, and maybe and I'm just continu continuing, oops, I'm, I'm using a linear dimension because I want to click on different points or you can, if you like, use a an aligned dimension to pick up on um, lines or um, faces of things. Okay, so uh, dimensions such as uh, the rebate might be important, um, the wall thickness, um, maybe skirting, any detail components that you have um, that is not covered in the large scale drawing, you might want to uh, put them in here. Same with the um, annotation, so let's do a text with a leader, um, or maybe just a straight arrow in this case, you might want to, um, now if this particular wall is um, disruptive just turn it off for the moment okay so that you can um, see clearly okay so let's continue with the text and I might want to remember what um, we had about annotation Okay, let's 
it's just telling me that it's not going to be visible because um, my cropping region is cropping um, before the text. So let's change that now. Um, and I'm just going to drag that. Now, see this dotted line? Okay, that's, um, that's how, uh, that's the visibility, basically, the visibility boundary. Notice that when I move that dotted line, it shows the text. Okay, if I move it in, it won't show the text. Okay. Now, I don't want to change the cropping boundary because the cropping boundary will uh, crop everything to that line, including the hatching and the line work, which is what I want to do. I want to um, crop it as tight as possible to this wall section so I only see the wall. But I also want to see anything that's outside it, like annotation and dimensioning. So I'm just going to move that. Uh, dotted boundary out so I can see um, anything that is outside that crop region. Now I'm also going to turn this crop boundary off so I can actually see what it will really look like. Okay so there's my uh, first uh, piece of text. Uh, once again things like size uh, and material is important. Um, you might want to um, do the same for a um, the brick skin. Um, keep in mind that Remember, we're aligning things and making sure that everything looks nice and neat. So this could be a 90. Oops. Okay, so you can see what I've done here and I'm going to condense that a little bit. You can see that there's size, there is material, there is um, cladding information as well and when you're in a detailed drawing you want to give that sort of information so as much information as possible about what this element is, what it's made of, how it's installed, things like that. Okay. Now as you continue with your text um, and I'm just going to do another one here for the bottom plate but make sure that once again it's aligned um, and this might be a 90 times 50 millimeter bottom plate and I'm just going to move this up a little bit, um, move the arrow down and move that until it's directly horizontal. Okay, so you can see that everything's aligned, everything's neat more than um, anything. This is away from any other line work, so I can actually read it very clearly and the arrow is also nice and clear. Now you can change the styles if you want, so if you don't like that arrow you can have a, a different arrow. Uh, you know how to do that from the last tutorial. Okay, now I'm just going to bring back that wall there. Now what happens if you have elements in the background like this and you may have other things in the background like the neighboring buildings or anything else that you don't want to see in your section drawing. Um, now that's easily rectified if you go back into the um, cross section okay you can see that that's all visible if you go back into the floor plan for a second and select that section line okay so this actually represents that cross section um, you can see if you select this dotted blue line around it now that represents how far it sees. I'm just going to um, go back into the first floor. Okay, no, that's fine. Um, that represents how far um, uh, Revit will look when it cuts uh, through the section and displays uh, the line work. I'm just going to pull this back, all the way back, because I know that the other retaining wall um, is somewhere over here. So I'm going to pull it back past the retaining wall so I don't see it in the background. Okay, so this is how far Revit will see for the section. If I go back into the section, 
you can see that now the wall is gone okay it will show the the section through that one which is fine um, and if I go into my detail drawing it's been reflected here as well okay so now we're starting to get a detail drawing together um, I'm going to leave you to finish off the detail drawing um, using all the detail uh, tools that you have here um, keep in mind that uh, you're trying to clarify this construction so uh, anything that needs clarification make sure you put it in either through line work or through text or through dimensions now before we end this tutorial I'm just going to show you how you put you can put this on a sheet and how cross-referencing um, starts to work so let's create another sheet um, and you can do that in the view sheet um, that's my title block press OK here it is there and it's filled up um, as I like it to and I'm just going to oops, uh, put in the name of my sheet here so typical wall section um, it will be at 1 to 50 and it's sheet 4 this time so just make sure your naming is consistent so if you're not using that zero don't put zero on all of them so I'm just going to change them all um, and it probably is a good thing anyway if you're not going to have hundreds of drawings just reduce that sort of amount of numbers okay so here's our sheet now to put in that um, wall section so let's go into view and scroll down until you see our section, typical wall section, here we go and place it in now you can see very clearly that it is very long um, and it just barely fits onto that sheet um, now this is where we would need to um, slice this wall section into parts so that you're only seeing the key um, components of this such as the roof and walls uh, junction um, this junction and of course this junction and of course anything in between you really don't need so we're going to slice it off and bring the junctions together um, now you can either do that here on the sheet or in the detail drawing itself I like to do it here on the sheet so I can see immediately how it's going to present itself on the sheet so click on the view and activate the view okay and that gets us inside the detail drawing which is exactly like working inside the detail drawing view itself um, now we need to turn on the crop boundary for this or crop region so down here in the control bar click on that so we can see that boundary again remember that keep that dotted uh, line there I need that um, but if you click on the solid line you'll see these break lines here okay um, click on one of those break lines and what they'll do is break that view into parts now we've got the top part and the bottom part but we're missing the other part so uh, that top part's fine I'm going to select this view and extend it so I can see um, the part that I actually want to see the junction there um, and then I want to maybe break this further so let's click on the break line again so I can break it into two parts and then extend that so I can see the roof and wall junction there and move that up so I can clearly see the floor and wall junction there um, okay so now I've got all my parts you might want to see a little bit more of that and a little bit more of that okay now to bring them down so that they're not so um, separated um, I'm just going to select each part like this one and that you should see an arrow right in the middle of that box click on the arrow and that will allow you to drag it up a little bit and it will drag all the text and everything with it um, same with this one so you might want to leave a nice gap in between them and same with that one so let's just select, select that one okay so now you can see that okay they're all let's move that up a bit so it doesn't move with it okay so play around with that until you get it 
uh, the way you'd like to display on that piece of paper. And once you've done, just turn the crop region off so that you can see what it looks like. Now, if you're using this method of cropping the drawing, just make sure you put a break line in there so you'll have to draw it. Now, if you're not drawing your own break line, you can actually load in a detail component. Um, you might need to load as a family first. Um, if you go into, de there's a break line there in the families. Okay, so I've just loaded a break line and I can access it through the detail component. Um, now this particular break line is very specific. It doesn't need you to um, break up the drawing like this. So if I turn the crop region on again and just merge these two drawings, that's fine. Okay, um, and show you what this break line does. So here's my break line. I can just put a break line where I need to, like so. And Revit will automatically, as you can see there, um, mask a region around that break line like so. Okay, so you might need to put in another break line here. Um, and you can manipulate this. Okay, so you can um, drag it up and down. Um, there are other things. There. So just play around with some of these options. Um, I might just undo that so you can see the break line. Can make that break line narrower, etc. etc. Okay, so that's a break line with a masking region attached to it. Otherwise, draw a break line yourself if you like. I'm just going to use a, a thinner pen this time um, and I'm just going to. I mean, I'll do this very roughly, but you might want to draw it neater. Okay. And of course, you can see that break line there. Okay. Okay. Okay, now using things like masking regions, mask out areas that you want to hide. Um, and you can use filled regions as well. Detail lines, draw whatever um, further detail lines you need. Uh, some of the components might be. Uh, in hand, come in handy as well. Things like insulation. Um, make sure that you start to embellish your detailed drawing with the um, appropriate lines, but also uh, with further annotation and dimensioning. Um, and I'll just end this tutorial here because you can go back to your um, project and start to generate some detailed drawings um, for your project. Make sure that you put it on a sheet. Um, and that it presents itself well on a sheet as well. Now, of course, uh, I'm just going to just deactivate that view. Of course, there's nothing stopping you from, I'm just going to move this up a little bit, generating more detailed drawings for this uh, sheet. So you could call this sheet um, detailed drawings, um, and it could contain a wall section, it could contain a um, detail of maybe one of those junctions at 1 to 5. It could contain another a detail drawing from uh, another section or even a detail drawing from one of the plans. So let's say that you want to, um, I, I'm just going to a sheet here. You can um, do a detail drawing maybe of this column and how the internal walls meet that column. Um, so you can, uh, using the same process of uh, using a call out, uh, generate more uh, detailed drawings and place them here um, on the sheet. Okay, so before you move on to the next tutorial, make sure that uh, first you have all of your sheets created. Secondly, you have all of the uh, relevant views on those sheets. Thirdly, that every single one of these views are dimensioned and annotated. Um, and fourthly, you have generated some detailed drawing, placed them on a sheet and dimensioned them and annotated them as well. Um, as well, of course, uh, embellish them with further detailed line work. The next tutorial will uh, briefly run you through uh, rendering a simple view, uh, perhaps for a cover sheet uh, for visualization uh, purposes um, before we start to uh, print your working set.